The vellum and file default unzips to your C drive. And the first place you'll go is to the examples folder at the top. Open up demo one. And demo one has all the configuration files required to write your first pick program. And you will save it, give it a name, um, and my one was New Step. So I used a file called New Step. An awful lot of the configuration files you're not going to change. I'm going to take you through the important bits. And the first one is configuration bits here. The demo one will default to the crystal oscillator. Unless you need the accuracy that you would get with a crystal oscillator, it's far easier to use the internal RC oscillator, no clock out. In order to do that, you need to copy the internal RC oscillator and paste it to this point here. At some point, you may need to define some folders or files as variables. In this one, we have three variables. We have timer one, timer two, and pattern. And they are used in this delay routine here. Because, mic because PIC controllers operate so quickly, this controller processes one million instructions per second. Quite often, to get them to interact correctly with real world procedures and processes, we have to slow things down. And we do that by using delay routines. And this one uses timer one and timer two here. We're not really going to talk about delay routines today. This is more about the microcontroller itself and using it to program a stepper motor. Here we have two subroutines. CW stands for clockwise and CCW stands for counterclockwise. Both these routines are used to shift the stepper motor clockwise and counterclockwise. You'll note there are one, two, three, four steps in each routine. This means the stepper motor will carry out three steps. One step, two step, three step for both routines. The highlighted part here is where the main program starts and we've got various options that we can put in there. For today, the only one we're really interested in is port B here. The command move literal to the working folder, binary, eight zeros, and then moving the working folder to tri-state B, this variable here, effectively sets all of port B from port B0 to port B7 as outputs and we can use those outputs to run our stepper motor. The main program loop is here. Test step is known as a label. Test step calls clockwise here. Clockwise steps through its routine, clears file port B, and then switches on and off the ports of port B in the correct sequence in order to get the stepper motor to turn in a given direction. When we return from clockwise, we call three delay routines and then we call counterclockwise and the stepper motor will then run in the opposite direction counterclockwise. Once again, we call three delay routines and then we have a branching instruction known as go to. Go to goes to test step and we effectively get a loop that goes on and on. If the program gets through to end, which it can't because of the branching instruction, it will end. Those are the main things you need to be aware of when first programming your PIC microcontroller. Programming the microcontroller is relatively easy. We use the Velleman board. Uh, the microcontroller you're going to use, we're using a PIC16F627. You will need a serial connection 
here and that will need to go into the back of your computer. Mine's down there somewhere. You'll need a power supply, uh, normally 13 volts. We're using a 15 volt power supply there. And when it comes to programming the microcontroller, you're going to need to flick this switch here. We have our program. We save our program. We go back to the main folder and we open up MPA MPASM Win, which I can't say. We open up MPASM Win. In this configuration, it defaults to the 16F627. If you were using a different type of pick, you could change that here, but we're not, of course. And we have the source file that we would need to find. Now, when you browse, initially it'll ask you for ASM assembly files here. You need to open up all files and scroll down for the file you're after. My one is, of course, new step. Open, and then you assemble file here and the green bar means that your assembly was successful we have some messages which are warnings but that doesn't stop file assembling and being usable if you have any red warnings or errors you'll have to go back through the code and find out where you went wrong from that point we open up prog pick 2 You might want to check it's on the right COM port. And another thing that's very worth checking, sometimes you get COM errors, make sure you don't have two versions of PROGPIC open at the same time. That will give you a COM error. That's well worth knowing about. Open your file. New step hex. So it's a hex file. That's the one we're going to use. We open that up and we're going to press right. But before we do, we need to make sure on the velamen that we've flicked the program switch and we see the red light flashing here. Then we go back to our file and we press right and we see the file being written to the microcontroller here. When it's OK, you can switch prog off and because this file runs outputs on port B, the same as the test board here, we should see some of these LEDs lighting on and off, like so, in the sequence required to run the stepper motor. And then you can switch that off. You take your chip out of the velamen and you insert it into your board. This is the microcontroller itself. In order to get it to run with an RC oscillator, we only need three or four connections. We need a five volt power supply that comes from this voltage regulator. And we also need a ground, of course, that goes back to the voltage regulator. And the master clear or main clear needs to be connected to five volts through a resistor. And I've used a 10K resistor at this point here to connect that up. The microcontroller itself cannot supply enough current to run a stepper motor. Here we see the stepper motor doing the steps I talked about. So in order to get it to do the stepping, the microcontroller requires transistors um, in a H-bridge configuration, and I'll show you that on a circuit, but these are the transistors set up in a H-bridge configuration here. There are eight of them for the two phases of the stepper motor. And to keep things as clear as possible, you should try color coding and writing down which code is which. Um, and you would do that on, on a piece of paper. So for example, I know that port B0 is purple, and I can trace port B0 to where it's supposed to go. And I'm going to need that when I work out the code sequence to make the stepper motor step through its sequence. One other thing that you must have with a microcontroller is decoupling capacitors on the power supply, which is what I've got here. So I've got 100 microfarad and 100 nanofarad capacitors decoupling the microcontroller. The stepper motor runs off 12 volts, so we have a voltage regulator for the microcontroller itself. 
and then 12 volts to run the motor through the H-bridge transistors. This is a circuit diagram that can be used with a stepper motor. In this example there is a bridge rectifier, but you don't need to use one of those if you have some type of DC power supply that's in, in excess of 12 volts. You will need to use a voltage regulator to get 5 volts out, and there we see the 5 volts feeding the microcontroller power supply, and also the main clear or master clear button here. And also we have the decoupling capacitors at this point going down to ground. For our microcontroller we're using all of port B, that's port B0 to B7, and they will each go through a, a limiting resistor to the corresponding transistors here. And that's all labelled. And then the sequence in which these transistors switch on, switch on diagonally. For example, if I switch on Q7, difficult to see, Q7 and Q6, I'm going to have current flowing through this transistor, through this phase of the motor down to ground, and it will spin in one direction. Each stepper motor is going to have its own sequence of ports that need to be switched on, so you need to consult the data sheet for the stepper motor you're using. These transistors should be power transistors. I've used ZTX689Bs. You might be better off, I think actually you would be better off using power effects in this type of circuit. But the 689B works okay. It's not, uh, it's not disastrous, it does okay. This is an example of a data sheet. Uh, you can see I've written on it various sequences because I didn't get it all right first, first off. But here, in this area, shows the clockwise sequence in order in which you need to switch the ports on and then to get it to go the other way you need to switch the ports on same sequence but in reverse so you're going to have two different sequences clockwise and counterclockwise